In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the print layout for designing your maps, for printing on paper, exporting to PDF, or using it as an image in a presentation. In QGIS 3, we can start a new print layout after designing our map with the right styles and with the right labels in the map canvas. We go to Project, and there we choose New Print Layout. We have to give it a unique name, so we can uh, save the print layout, different print layouts, in one QGIS project. So let's call it Chera del Fuego Map. Okay. Now it opens a new window. This is the print layout view. And here we see a sheet of paper. We can change the page size of the sheet of paper by clicking right and choosing Page Properties. Under Item Properties we can then set the page size. In this case we will set it to A3. Depending on the shape of what you want to show, you can choose here Landscape or Portrait. Let's fit the sheet of paper back to the screen. And we have to think of how we want to put the different elements on the map. It would be good to have the map here, a scale bar below, and a title on top, a legend and a north arrow on the right, and maybe an overview map also on the bottom. So let's start drawing the map. So with this icon, we can insert the map from the canvas. Let's leave some margins. So there it is, and it takes what we had in the map canvas. With this button we can select the element, and then the item properties menu adapts to the selected item. So it depends on what we have chosen. With this button we can move the content, and change the content, zoom level uh, of the map. So we can move it a bit to the right. And we can zoom in a bit. With the scroll button we can zoom in and out. And with the scale we can fine tune this. To 200,000 at the zero. There we are. And now we have a better fit on the screen of the study area with the different blocks. So the next thing that we are going to do is to add an inset where we can see the overview of uh, this map. So we are going to draw another one. You see these guides that is for snapping to a um, the side of another object. So now we have insert the inset and then make it a bit bigger. And what I want to show here is uh, a bit of a zoomed out area with, and then indicate it on it, uh, this area. So what I first do is I'm going to lock here all the items. So lock layers and lock the style for layers. And for this one we are going to change it. So I go to the map canvas and I'm going to hide all the layers except um, the Google, sorry, the OSM, OpenStreetMap. There I'm going to zoom out so we see a bit of uh, chili with it and there on this map we can indicate later where we are. So I go back to the other screen and there I'm going to check update preview and I'm going to use this to zoom out so we have a bit of South America in here. And now we can use the overview function. So here's overviews. I can add an overview and I choose an overview map. So that's map 1 and it will indicate the area that is covered by map 1 in this overview image. That's very useful to point users to the right area and give a bit of context. 
Now we're going to add a scale bar that is related to the big image, so we need to select it first. Now with this button we can add the scale bar. There it is. When I click the scale bar, also the item properties are adjusted to the scale bar. Let's remove the left uh, items. And it already looks nice. Always make sure that you have uh, intervals, uh, multiples of 10, 100, 25, which is uh, more readable than decimal numbers. Now, what we also need is a north arrow. And we can add it as a picture. So this adds a picture. But, uh, here you see arrows, but these are connector arrows for flowcharts, for example. So we use this one. We can place a north arrow here. And we click here on search directories, and there we have different options for uh, north arrows. Let's use uh, this one. And there it is. With many more options, you can add your own SVGs. You can uh, rotate it with the map if the map is rotated. And you can do that with any picture uh, that you have. So next, we want to add the legend. And of course, this legend here is not very human readable. We need to adjust it. So the item properties are, again, applicable to the legend. And when we uncheck auto update, we can edit this. So we remove this, we edit this name. So we say important places, work area seem okay. This is the coastline. We rename it to coastline. And this is the bathymetry. It's always good to give the units meters with reference to the sea level. And then there are some layers that we didn't use. Google Satellite, we can remove it. And the OSM standard, that's the open street map that's in the background. So we just call it background source open street map. There it is. That's our legend. Now let's improve uh, the map a bit. We can put a grid on the map. If we select the map, the item properties apply now to the map. We choose grids, we add the grid, and we click on modify grid. And it would be good to have 25 kilometer grid lines, or maybe 50. There it is. Let's use the exterior ticks. And we draw the coordinates. And it's always good to adjust that left is vertical ascending. And the right is vertical descending. And it's also not very useful to have the decimal, so we put here the precision on zero. We can of course change many other things like the font color and the style of the lines. Uh, what is still missing is a little frame on the side. So we select the map and then here is frame. There it is. Move it a bit around, it looks better. And now we can add a title. 
So any text can be added with this button. I can type it here, Chera de Fuego. You can change the font to something big because it's a title. Choose another one. here work blocks there it is and um, yeah we can align it to the page it gives this grip then it's really in the middle we can also align it uh, to other things so if we would align it with this one we choose here align center yeah and with this one we can undo it's centered with respect to the page. Yeah, we can also there change the font color and uh, do other things. And what we can also do is insert a logo uh, here. And it's also nice to have a line around this one. We can export our map as an image, as a SVG to further edit it in Inkscape, for example, or as a PDF. Most often you will use the PDF option. We'll give a warning. Not so important, and there we save it. There it is.